Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is an amazing day. Why? Because the Lord has blessed us with salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to bless you with such strength, such ability to just press forward with whatever is on your schedule, with whatever circumstance is in your life. God is going to cause you to press forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Sherry Stedham, I love you, friend. Thank you for joining in. It is going to be a most awesome day. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Deborah Faulkner, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. It is going to be a most awesome day. Y'all, I am absolutely blown away with what God is doing for His church in this hour. Thank you, Deborah. He is doing a mighty work. Oh, thank you, Lord. He is bringing revival to his people. So if you have felt like you are on your last wind, you are at your last straw, you don't know if you can take it anymore, guess what? This is the broadcast for you. And I'm going to look at Ezekiel 37, and I'm just going to read some scriptures and get into what the Lord is telling me. It's interesting because probably yesterday, I believe it was, the Lord was telling me Ezekiel 37 for someone that's close to my heart. And the Lord was just, you know, putting on my heart, listen, I'm going to bring power from on high to the dry bones, to those that are just in a bad place and have even backslidden, and I'm going to heal them. And I don't know if you have anybody that is in your life that might be backslidden in the Lord or never have known Jesus Christ as Savior. Saints, this broadcast is for you. It is to give you encouragement. It is to give you hope. One of the things that the Lord has also been speaking to me about as we've started God's Bible School, the Prophet Session to a House of Prayer, the first broadcast was put up yesterday, just teaching you about Isaiah 56, verses 6 and 7, how God was talking about us and how we're going to honor the Sabbath day and in keeping that covenant and demonstrating our covenant with God, he is going to make us a house of prayer for all nations. As I was praying yesterday, the Lord just came on me and he said, Robin, so many of my people have grown weary and they don't know how to battle. It's almost like they forgot how to battle for their loved ones. And so also for you, for those that are joining in, as we also look at these dry bones, look at it from the viewpoint that God is going to renew you with strength to know that he is Lord of the battle. Jesus Christ has given you the keys of the kingdom, Matthew 16, 16 through 19. And glory to God, you're going to pray and prophesy freedom for your loved ones and those whom God has put on your heart. Amen. So let's look at uh, Ezekiel 37. And of course, I'm just going to start at verse 1. I'm going to also bring in from one of the sessions, session 4 in God's Bible School of the Prophets, year 2, the book of Ephesians, where God had me teach on the office, which is really gift in Ephesians 4, of prophet and the two attributes of Christ Jesus in that particular session of God's firewall. And so the two attributes that are pronounced of Jesus Christ in the gift of prophet are the strict obedience unto God and the word in power. And so in the book of Ephesians, which is that whole year, nine workbooks, year two, God's Bible School of the Prophets, God has me bring in the gift of prophet and the two attributes of each and every gift is very pronounced in that particular gift that is evidence in Christ Jesus. So Jesus has these divine characteristics expressed while he's on earth, and those characteristics are pronounced in the different gifts. 
And so this particular teaching that I'm going to bring to you is what I used in that session, session four, which is actually workbook 13 of Gospel Bible School of the Prophets. And so Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 12, and I want to bring you this small teaching. Scripture says in the Amplified Classic, the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Now, before we go to any more scriptures, anytime you see the spirit of the Lord, you're going to know that Ezekiel 30, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. And so when you see the spirit of the Lord in scripture, it is about freedom and it is always, 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 as with the Lord of hosts, about the message and the power of the word, the message. So let me just preface that because verse one, that's what we see. We see the spirit of the Lord, that the prophet is lifted up in the spirit by the Lord, by the hand of the Lord. And so it is about the message and the power that this message carries, amen, because God watches over his word to perform it. And he caused me to pass around among them, and behold, there were many human bones in the open valley or plain, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. And I will put breath and spirit in you. Woo! Hallelujah. Excuse me. Let me just praise my God. Woo! Woo! He's just given me more revelation of what I just edited and wrote yesterday in the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me read that again. Verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. And I will put breath and spirit in you and you dry bones shall live and you shall know and understand and realize that I am the Lord, the sovereign ruler who calls forth loyalty and obedience, obedient service. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was thundering, woo, noise, and behold, a shaking and a trembling and a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews upon the bones, and flesh came upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath or spirit in them. Then said he to me, prophesy to the breath and the spirit, son of man, and say to the breath and spirit, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and spirit, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath and spirit came into the bones, and they lived, woo, and they stood up, oh, they, excuse me while I have church, woo, oh my goodness, thank you, Jesus, I just know, woo, thank you, Lord, excuse me, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, while I have church, woo, verse 8, and I looked and behold, the sinews came upon the bones and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them, but there was no breath or spirit in them. Then said he to me, verse nine, prophesy to the breath and spirit, son of man, and say to the breath and spirit, thus 
says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and spirit, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath and the spirit came into the bones, and they lived, and they stood up upon their feet, hallelujah, an exceedingly great host. Woo! Excuse me, y'all. I am just having church. Woo! Woo! Because I know what God has had me write in the new book. Woo! This is just blessing me, and I'll give you just a little morsel. Oh, my goodness. Just wait. Woo! Y'all get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 11. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord, behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land. Woo! Can you say the land? Hallelujah. Of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, your sovereign ruler, when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, O my people, and I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know, understand, realize that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. So, woo! Oh my goodness, I've been having church. So the two attributes, the strict obedience and word and power, the gift of prophet, those two attributes of Christ Jesus are pronounced in the one that carries and walks in that gift. And so the analogy God had me as in the whole book of Ephesians, it was about astronomy. You know, I do the different sciences. Year one is about anatomy. Year two, astronomy. Year three is about just different things in relation to the earth and also the ancient Hebrew. Year four, physics and mathematics, the gospel of John and the book of Song of Solomon off the chain. So year year two, God has me with the office, gift, a prophet, strict obedience, and the word and power. And so the Holy Spirit has me use the analogy of lightning and thunder. Are you ready? This is what's so amazing. And so when lightning happens, the heat from the light, the lightning comes into the atmosphere and all of a sudden it expands it. And once it expands it, it's created a vacuum that all of a sudden, the wind comes behind it. And you hear, because of the lightning. And so the word is like lightning that comes forth with the fire of God upon it and creates a space. Woo! Hallelujah! For the spirit, for the wind, and you're going to hear a thunder and a rumbling, and you're going to see the word being performed in your midst. Is that not powerful? And so God brought me that in 2012 when I taught on gift of prophet. And as I read Ezekiel 37, and this is the scripture that he had me use, So Ezekiel 37, verse 7, so I prophesied, sent the word, because you've got to understand, in the book, God's Bible School of Prophets, A House of Prayer, God has me unpacked the gift of prophecy. Saints, that gift has power. It is the word of God, and God watches over it to perform it. And so in this process, as we're learning how to pray the word of truth and the Father's heart, as I do that teaching series, saints, this verse 7 is such a great picture to understand what's going on. So as I prophesied, as I was commanded, there was thundering noise 
and behold, a shaking and a trembling and a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. God showed me. He said, Robin, that's the lightning and the thunder. When the word goes forth, that light and it creates a space for Holy Spirit to perform the word that that wind that comes in that vacuum, that that lightning created as it expounds in the air, that that wind causes the thunder. And I was like, praise the Lord. Woo! Strict obedience. Only speak what the Father tells you to speak. When I was in that test of strict obedience for about three years, God would not let me speak hardly at all. He would give me all these revelations and I would be in Bible studies. I would be at meetings and these people would be teaching on things and I would be going, Oh God, you have given me so much revelation if they only knew this. But see, he was testing my flesh, my pride, and I just said nothing. And I'm telling you, saints, that some of y'all are in this test where God is allowing you to be in this space of strict obedience. That you're just not moving your mouth whenever you want, but you're moving it when the Father wants. Because as you pray and the power of prayer, which then you'll see turns into the gift of prophecy and you're flowing in the gift of prophecy and prayer, you're going to see power as your prayer, prayer avails tremendous power. It availeth much. Now watch this because this is so powerful. And I'll just give you a morsel. I don't want to give too much. It is mind blowing. Okay. And I've gone back and edited again chapter one this week. And I've added probably about 10 more pages to chapter one. I've written three and a half chapters. I'm already writing, writing in chapter four. But God wanted me to go and edit it and add more. And so the revelation God has given me has just been beyond phenomenal. And so what we don't understand is that the process of creation in relation to mankind, Adam, Eve, now you and I, we are still God's creation. We are his handiwork. He has made us, not we ourselves. Amen. Psalm 100 verse 3. And so as we know God has made us, not we ourselves. The Lord began to show me that we just think creation in relation to mankind was just boom, one time, and that was it. And God had me really define and lay out, and I do it for at least 10 pages in chapter one. At the intro and lay out in 10 pages, what does creation look like for Adam, and how does that apply to us? And God began to show me that creation is the form of the thing, or can we say person, Adam, and plus the environment. You're about to get breakthrough. Somebody here needed to show up today because you needed a breakthrough. And this is about to shift your mindset as the power of God's holiness works and stirs your inner man and brings the transformed mind. And so God began to show me, and I get into great depths, great detail, so much Hebrew, so much Latin, so much science, so much scripture. Okay, I just don't want to give too much away, but just give a snippet because Holy Spirit has been all over me as I've been reading this because I see it. Once you see it, like Rich says, and I've been telling him for weeks, uh, months, last year, last summer. Oh my goodness, once you see it, you cannot unsee it. You literally see the kingdom of heaven. I kid you not. And you cannot unsee it. You, It is so obvious and it is in front of your eyes. And so this is what Holy Spirit showed me, what I've added another 10 pages to chapter one in relation to Eden, in relation to mankind with Adam and Eve. And so we just have our idea of creation, our limited knowledge. That means God created Adam. He formed him out of the dirt. He breathed this breath, this life, the spirit into him and created a man. Creation done. No, not done. Not done. Okay. 
Because in our minds, creation is done one time, that's it. No, it is continuing, okay? It is moving forward in time. And when we look at creation, creation involves two things. The form, the image, which would be person, and the environment. And you have to understand that creation is a process. Ding, 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 ding. Of what? Your existence. Hello, just because the, you're on the earth does not mean you exist in the kingdom of God. Just because you say you're a Christian and you've received salvation does not mean that you're walking in the kingdom. No. What it indicates is that you've been given keys. You have the door, Jesus Christ, to enter the kingdom. And as Jesus said in John 10, 10, you can come in and you can come out and find pasture. And so there is continual movement and us knowing the kingdom of heaven and bringing it to earth. And this is what the Lord showed me. And it is in chapter one. I don't want to give too much away because it is so expounded on. And please, nobody add to this. I have been writing this book for two and a half years almost. And so please know that this is the anointing God has given me. And I've poured in hundreds of hours of research and writing on it. And I'm trying feverishly to finish in the Lord's timing. In Jesus' name. And so this is what God told me and showed me and had me write about is that creation is about form, the image, and the environment that the image is in. Our self-image, which represents where we exist. Because of Christ, we've been given a new kingdom. And so if your image, your form is in the kingdom of heaven, woo, hallelujah, you know your identity and your existence in Christ. That is why the dry bones, they stood up in a grave. The grave represents the world. They stood up in the grave and their creation, their existence, their identity did not change because they were in the wrong kingdom. Woo! Hallelujah! That Their process was stuck. They couldn't move forward because their image, their person was in a land that was dry. Woo! Hallelujah! Somebody's going to get this today. Hallelujah! You've been in a dry land. You've been planted there and you don't know why your existence has been stifled and why it hasn't changed. And God's about to get your battle on. Hallelujah! to move forward. Woo! Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. So God spoke to those dry bones through the prophet and he said, I'm going to bring you out of that environment. I'm going to bring you out of that old process where you've been stuck. You've been dying and you don't know what to do. I'm going to bring you out and I'm going to put you in the promised land. Woo! The kingdom of heaven and your image is going to change. Your hope is going to change. And it's so funny because this morning, the two personalized tags were glory to him and hopeful one. Oh, somebody needs to give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to him. He's making you hopeful today. In Jesus' name, you've been stuck in a dry land and wonder why you can't change because the environment has stifled the process of your creation, your existence. Hallelujah. God is bringing you light and life and he's going to breathe into you and he's going to bring you into the, the knowledge of his glory in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And you're going to see it in a different way because the kingdom of heaven is here. It is here on earth. It is right there where you are. But are you banging on the door hoping to get in? Because your image has been in the wrong kingdom of the world and you can't figure it out. Oh, it's going to be by God's spirit. Hallelujah.
All you have to do is to know your need and know that you need to get out of the world and know that you need to get into the kingdom of heaven. Know that you need relief. You need breakthrough. You need healing. You need your children saved. You need finances. You need a job. You need God's will. You need, need, need. And that need is in the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And that earth that has the kingdom of heaven, hallelujah, that is our house. So saints, understand today, God is waking you up where you have felt battle weary, it's because the world has been upon you and it's been speaking to your image. Saints, as I taught yesterday with the book of the house of prayer, saints, keep the Sabbath holy. Woo! Hallelujah. Keep it holy. Oh, saints, get the world out of your house. Get the world out of your body. Watch what you watch. Watch what you allow to come into your house and keep it sanctified. Keep it holy and watch. Woo! Hallelujah. Your landscape change. Woo! Excuse me while I have church. God provides a ram in the bush and a way of escape. You get your escape from the world when you have a new landscape. Woo! Oh, I got to look it up. Play, praise the Lord. Oh, I cannot stop praising the Lord. He is preaching today, isn't he? Landscape, visible features of an area that has an appeal. And landscape comes from the Dutch words land and scap, which means the equivalent of a ship. Get me on a ship, a different ship, God. Ship me out of the old address. Ship me to the kingdom of heaven, Father God, in Jesus' name. Saints, I pray this blesses you, and I pray the Spirit of the Lord be upon you. I pray that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom, I pray that God flood the eyes of your understanding with a lot of truth, bringing you knowledge, wisdom as to the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and that you see your need, run to the throne of grace, obtaining mercy and grace boldly for your time of need. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. Get your war on. Be refreshed. Be renewed. And pray those backslidden loved ones out of the grave. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you.